Uh, we were lucky enough to um, have John in our car for a few long car trips. He wasn't driving. Uh, he had an uncanny ability to smell the beer from miles away. Uh, uh, he, uh, they were great long, long trips with long, and long, long lessons, <laughs> language, discussions about cricket, uh, Australia, songs, lessons. Extraordinary lessons, lessons I'll never forget. Um, just uh, was that was incredible. But uh, yeah, that un kept uncanny ability to smell the beer from a long way away, even if he rarely slept. It was just we talked and we sang all the time. But if sometimes it was very, very, very late and we were very, very drunk, and uh, he would sleep. And Chloe was designated driver often. <laughs> and but we drive. Remember what? Drove, we were ten kilometres from Kuyu, coming up from Victoria and about five kilometres and three kilometres and that was our standard stopping place where we would always stop. And I thought, John, mate, not this time, not this time. But sure enough, it's cool, your coat, pull in, pull in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. Anyway, Kuyo, Safala, playing a gig at Safala with John and Chloe. Just an impromptu thing at the pub. <laughs> and he sang the Wild Colonial Boy that night. And he said, if you're going to sing the Wild Colonial Boy, you sing it with venom and stamp of the foot. <laughs> and uh, that, it was an impromptu thing. We weren't meant to get paid or anything, but they paid us at the end. They, they gave us a bottle of Bushmills whiskey. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. And, and I'll never forget walking out of the pub and John putting his arm around me and holding the bottle and saying, mate, it's the best whiskey in the world. <laughs> <laughs> See what that night it looked like. <laughs> uh, so Farla was. Uh, uh, I thought I might just tell a quick game story because um, the night I heard about John um, going, actually, I I, um, I had a gig, um, not unusual, and at every gig since I've sung one of John's songs. It's become that's what you do. It doesn't matter what the gig. Sometimes the year six kids are. <laughs> Confused, <laughs> but I do it anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, I um, I put ten dollars in the um, push upon the button until you lose the lot machine, and I don't know why, because I'm like I know all about gambling and I've had my little share of it, but I, I don't really, and I haven't for a long time. But that night I just kept getting credits after credits after credits, and I've taken a hundred dollars out of the machine about a half an hour later, thinking that's what do, and I thought thanks, John. <laughs> um, uh, but Safala, they were still having horse races at Safala when I was a kid. And uh, I just reminded this game of the story. Because the last time I went out there to watch a horse race, we only made the last race. It was my friend Sean and I. And the last race was running at the race course on the flat there at the river. And they were running a two horse race. <laughs> And we walked in and we walked up to the little bookie at his little table in the dust and I saw that one of the horses was running at 10 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to, don't you? You know you're a fool. You know you shouldn't. But we, sort of, we walked up to the table and there was an old fellow standing at the table in front of us. And he said to the bookie, he said, I'll have $50 on the 10 to 1 shot, please. He didn't look like he had $50 to his name, I've got to say. But the bookie started writing up a ticket. An old mate handed his fifty dollars over in the book. He was writing out a ticket, and he looked over his glasses at this old bloke, and he said, "Do you want to make it a <laughs> hundred?" <laughs> no, I said, "I can't." And he said, "Yes, yes, you can. Go on, dig around." And the old fellow dug around, and his ass was hanging out of his pants. He really did not look like he had any money, but he pulled out a ten here and a twenty there, and some shrapnel and change, and tipped it all on the counter and spread the coins up, counted the coins. He said, make it a hundred then. And the bookie started writing out another ticket on this 10 to 1 shot. And he looked over his glasses again at the fellow and he said, do you want to double it? <laughs> <laughs> and the fellow said, I can't. Look, you've seen me. I've just cleaned them. And he said, no, no, you, come on, you're a local. The bookie wasn't, obviously. You're a local. The pub tent over there, you know everyone in that tent. And the other, you can see him over there and they're over there sort of laughing. Pointing out that something's going on and the old fellow said, all right, all right. And he walked over to the pub tent and I said, how off? And he walked around and the fellows are laughing and they're throwing in a dollar here and twenty dollars there. And he walked over and he tipped the hat on the table and he said to the bookie, make it two hundred there. 
and the bookie started writing out the ticket. And he said to the old fella, he said, I think there's something you should know. I own that horse. <laughs> <laughs> and the old fella said, well, it's going to be a bloody slow race because I own the other one. <laughs>